Hey everyone, welcome to part one of our series on convergence of infinite sums or infinite series. So, in part zero, we discussed the sequence and how a sequence can converge. Now, we're ready to start adding up those terms in the sequence in what we call an infinite series. So just to clarify, infinite series is just the usage of sigma notation in terms of what notation is. So S, the infinite series, is equal to the sum from one to infinity of A sub N, if, of course, convergent. And that's what we're going to be looking at in this series. So we're going to be focusing on two types of series today, or in this part, the geometric series and a telescoping series. And you can already see I have an example for a telescoping series set up. And we're going to be looking at these two series because we can actually evaluate these series um, at um, even with an infinite amount of terms. So let's go ahead and get started with the geometric series. You're probably already familiar with the geometric sequence, that is a sub n is equal to a sub 1 r to the n minus 1, where, as you know, a sub n is the nth term in the sequence, a sub 1 is the first term, r is the common ratio, and n is the index in the sequence. If we go ahead and do the summation, s, this is going to be equal to the sum from 1 to infinity of a sub 1 r to the n minus 1, and that's just by infinite sum notation. And of course, we can go ahead and actually change this by properties of series. We can change this to this, uh, from 0 to infinity of a sub 1 r to the n. These are equal. If you go ahead and expand out the series, you will see that. So we can go ahead and rewrite this and expand out the series. We'll get a sub 1. And I'm going to factor out the a sub 1. That way, we'll get something like 1 plus r plus r squared plus r cubed plus so on and so forth. And then what I'm going to do here, we can actually get this by doing a partial sum, but I'm not going to do that. And uh, what I'm going to do is just do a 1 minus r over 1 minus r. And I'm going to multiply that into this summation here. That way, we will get a cancellation of terms. So we get a sub 1, 1 plus r plus r squared plus r cubed, plus so on and so forth. Here, I'm going to rewrite that plus so on and so forth, minus r times this sequence, times this summation right here, which is r plus r squared plus r cubed plus so on and so forth, all divided by 1 minus r. If we go ahead and cancel out these terms, cancel out r, and you can see that everything cancels because it all just is a plus minus plus minus, and you see that this is what we're left with. So as a result, the series converges to a sub 1 divided by 1 minus r. But this is, there's a caveat here. There's a specific condition that we need to satisfy so that this series actually does converge. If you take a look at r, r squared, r cubed, you would know that if r is less than 1, or if the absolute value of r is less than 1, then r squared will be less than r. And an example of that would be 0.5. So 0.5 squared we know that's 0.25, which is less than 0.5. That's just an example that we can use. There's no counterexamples to that rule because we're focusing on r is less than, or, and less, absolute value of r is less than one. So in order for this sequence, in order for the series to converge, r must be less than one in absolute value. So we get one plus r plus a smaller version of r plus a smaller version of r plus a smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And smaller. That way this will converge. If r is greater than or equal to 1 in absolute value, you'll know that r squared and r cubed are going to be greater than r. That's true for every r raised to some power. It'll be r plus a greater version plus a greater version plus a greater version plus a greater, 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 greater so on and so forth. And you'll see that s diverges if absolute value of r is greater than 1, or I should say greater than or equal to because if r is 1, you'll get 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, and so on and so forth, and then it'll diverge. So and that's pretty much an example of how we can use a geometric series as a convergence test. Because let's say we had the infinite series from 0 to infinity of, let's use an easy example here, 3 fourths to the n. So just to clarify, this is 1 times 3 fourths to the n, so a sub 1 is just 1, so we don't need to worry about that. You notice that 3 fourths is less than 1. So we can actually say that this is equal to 1 over 1 minus 3 fourths just by this just by this rule right here for geometric series. And as a result, we just get that the series equals 4. 
And so we can say that this converges by geometric series. And we can actually go ahead and use this geometric series in another context. Let's take a look at the repeating decimal 0.4 repeating. We know that this is 0.4444, so on and so forth. But we can also consider this as a summation. So we can get that this is 0.4 plus 0.04 plus 0.004 plus so on and so forth. And you can tell just based on if you add up 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.04, and 0 0.004, we get that this is 0 0.444, just based on that partial sum. You can tell that that's going to be true if we keep expanding this decimal out to infinity. But we can actually figure out what this is in fraction form, not by a calculator, just through calculus. So if we re rewrite this as a geometric series, this is 0 0.4 times 1 plus 0.4 times 0.1 raised to the first power, plus 0.4 times 0.1 raised to the second power, plus so on and so forth, you'll notice that we can rewrite this as the sum from 0 to infinity of 0.4 times 1 tenths to the n power. And I'm going to rewrite 0.4 as 2 fifths because that, those are the same thing. So we can say that 0.4 repeating, since 1 tenth is less than 1, we can say that this is equal to 2 fifths divided by 1 minus 1 tenth, which is equal to 2 fifths over 9 tenths. And as a result, just multiplying by the reciprocal, we get 20 over 45, and that simplifies to 4 ninths. So that's pretty much the geometric series summed up. We can go ahead and use it as a convergence test, evaluate the infinite series, and we can also turn infinite, infinitely repeating decimals into fractions. So that's pretty much it for one of the series we can evaluate. Let's focus on the next one, the telescoping series. So the telescoping series is a pretty special series. We're gonna examine this example right here. We have the series from one to infinity of one over n squared plus three n plus two. Looks pretty weird, right? But we can go ahead and rewrite this series as such. By factoring out this bottom expression, we get this is 1 over n plus 1 times n plus 2. Now, it's still pretty hard to evaluate the series, but we can take one more step, and that's called partial fraction decomposition. You might already be familiar with that from like Algebra 2 or Pre-Cal, but we're going to go ahead and cover up uh, what it is well, we're going to go ahead and cover what it is via the cover-up method. So, the cover-up method pretty much states that if I put my thumb over one of the factors, I need to find out what value of n will make the factor that I'm covering up zero. So, I'm, in this case, I'm covering up n plus 1. And to make n plus 1 zero, I need to set n equal to negative 1. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep that in mind. n is going to be negative 1. And I'm going to evaluate the rest of the series, that the rest of this expression that isn't covered up, at n equals negative 1. So in this case, I get 1 over negative 1 plus 2, and that's equal to 1. So, that's, so as a result, on the top, I just get 1 over n plus 1, and this is the series from 1 to infinity. And let's repeat the process for n plus 2, because I'm decomposing both fractions here. So... I cover up n plus 2, I know that n has to be negative 2, so as a result I plug in negative 2 everywhere else, so I get 1 over negative 2 plus 1, that's 1 over negative 1, which is negative 1. So I get 1 over n plus 1 minus 1 over n plus 2. And this is where the telescoping factor starts to come in. So if we go ahead and expand out this series, we get that this is equal to 1 over 1 plus 1 minus 1 over 1 plus 2, plus 1 over 2 plus 1, minus 1 over 2 plus 2, plus 1 over 3 plus 1, minus 1 over 3 plus 2, plus so on and so forth. If you notice here, I'm going to go ahead and just combine the, just do the addition on the bottom. We get 1 half minus 1 third plus 1 third, minus 1 fourth plus 1 fourth, minus one fifth, and I'm going to go ahead and do the next term as well, plus one fifth, minus so on and so forth. Now, 
you see here we have a minus and plus, but both are the same. So we can go ahead and cancel everything right here. But we shouldn't be too hasty to say that this is one half because there's still gonna be a one over n plus two that's being subtracted infinitely far away. So what I'm gonna say is that this is equal to the one half minus the limit as n goes to infinity of one over n plus two. And you can just do the expansion all the way to infinity and you will see that we get the limit as n goes to infinity of one over n plus two. That's pretty much just covering all of the terms that we canceled out. So as a result, if we evaluate this limit, we know that that's just gonna become one over infinity, which we know is going to be zero. So this telescoping series converges to one half. So we can say the series converges by properties of telescoping series. That's not how you spell telescoping, my bad. Telescoping series. So there's a lot more examples that we can do with a telescoping series, but I'm not gonna do them because I can't think of any at the moment, but there are still a lot. And now that, you, and you might see some on some worksheets or some homeworks that you might have to encounter. And thankfully, you'll know how to do the partial fraction decomposition now. So yeah, that's pretty much part one of the series convergence tests that we're going to understand. And yeah, I'll catch you guys in part two.